Hello viewers and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest video production. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm going to be commentating over the game I played for the 8th round of the 4th season of Sam Mann's Warhammer 40k Conquest Octagon Wa Online Competitive League. This was a top 16 match and the winner of this single elimination game would advance Advanced to the tournament's top eight. In this video, I played against a gentleman by the name of Brandon, better known as the Octagon user Ready Spades, and I just want to take a moment to preface this match by saying that, despite this very game being my 111th Conquest video, and that by this point in my LCG career, I've interviewed what feels like innumerable tournament champions, my personal estimated total number of matches played still remains slightly under 20. So, while I frequently talk to experts and feel like I do have significant competitive potential, I'm still missing an underlying understanding of a great many basic and fundamental elements of gameplay that would certainly stand to make me a much more competent player. So, I definitely make a few sub-optimal plays during this video, but for that very reason, I ask that you please Please leave comments, constructively criticizing and making suggestions for how I could improve and what I could have done differently, because with your assistance, hopefully someday I can indeed reach the level of skill and experience required to develop into a truly formidable tournament player. So if you enjoy this video and would like to see me play out and commentate more matches of my own, be sure to let me know in a comment. But but in any case, let's get our video started with a mirror match between myself and Ready Spades, both playing as Ragnar Blackmane. All right, thank you very much for joining me today for a very special commentated match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. I've once again taken up the reins of my tried and true Space Marines faction, Space Wolf trait, Warlord, Ragnar Blackmane, and much to my surprise, my opponent in this match, Brandon or Ready Spades, actually happens to have chosen Ragnar as well. I've never had the fortune of actually playing out a Space Marine on Space Marine mirror match before before, let alone when we're both running the same identical warlord, so I at least felt relatively secure in knowing that more or less I'd know what kind of tricks and tactics to expect from my opponent, though as becomes abundantly clear throughout the course of this video, uh, his deck and mine do vary slightly. Uh, but in assessing my opening hand here, I was basically going off of some advice I'd recently received by a good friend of mine. Uh, John Gobey during the inaugural episode of the Tyrant Cast, my podcast style discussion topic series of videos uh, in which our topic was deck building. We talked about what to see in your opening hands, and I was going for uh, a range of different units that are cheap that have a uh, command icon or two, along with one formidable combat unit. So I knew I had that honored librarian in my hand. Uh, if we take a look at the first three planets, we see Iridial being planet number one, which heals units. Elowith is planet number two, which allows you to tutor the top three cards of your deck. And planet number three is Yavarn, which allows players to put units directly into play into their HQ. But if you take a moment to assess the planet type icons associated with those first three planets, you, say, you see blue, 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 uh, three technology icons. So I figure if I can be as aggressive as possible, if I can potentially steal those first three planets, uh, uh, I could easily win the game, and if I dump out my honored librarian to planet number one, if I use Ragnar to, black it, uh, to back it up, Ragnar's ability could potentially kill off enemy units. I start the game with the initiative token, I'd have initiative on two of those three planets, and then uh, Ragnar just serves as a big meaty body to block enemy uh, attacks from blowing up my honored librarian, but I put a uh, black main sentinel to planet number two so I could get command there, draw some cards, try to draw into some of those space marine events, and then uh, 
just rest assured that if I need to, I can shift it upstream to planet number one in a pinch. My opponent put out a black main sentinel of his own to planet four and five to win command there, and uh, I wanted to play that honored librarian as late during deploy as I could, hopefully so my opponent wouldn't overinvest in combat units to the first planet. I put out a sanctioned psyker to planet number five, and here I'm trying to make up my mind, do I want to go to planet number one? I was considering not doing so up until the very point that my opponent put out a copy of Blood Angels Veterans to planet number one. I feel like that basically forced my hand, and now I definitely want to try to kill off those veterans. So I do opt to send Ragnar to planet number one. My opponent, interestingly, picks planet number two. So we're about to uh, finish up our command phase here, but both of us, uh, well, I guess my opponent actually has a reaction to trigger. It's looking as though... Um, I've got the initiative token, so I've got the opportunity to trigger a reaction first. I shift away the Black Main Sentinel. I don't want it to lose command for no reason. Black Main would potentially win a uh, command there, and he'd potentially have a chance to swing and kill it, and I didn't want to have to get rid of Indomitable Promotion or Crushing Blow if I didn't have to. Uh, plus, the Sentinel doesn't really pose too much of a threat to Ragnar, but my opponent puts out a copy of Black Main's Hunt to bounce Ragnar to planet number one, and he also uses a subsequent reaction, actually a pair of reactions, to move both of his black main sentinels to planet number one, and uh, just the hallmark of my inexperience as a player is I was already thinking that things are starting to go a little bit badly. Ragnar triggers his ability on my honored librarian, and to my great fortune, uh, my opponent did not actually possess a copy of Crushing Blow in his hand as I have, and that easily could have cost me this uh, first battle in just, you know, uh, making it so I had no chance at all. But there is a glut, just a wealth surplus a plethora of different units here sitting all at the first planet. Uh, both of us kind of go into this. It's kind of funny. The sanctioned psyker is sitting there alone at planet number five, and then everybody else is just completely fixated on the first planet here. Granted, I've got the initiative token. My biggest threats here are going to be that Blood Angels veterans. I have to attack before it gets a chance to attack, and my strategy here going into combat is going to be trying to kill off as many units as possible, and sponge up as much damage as possible with Ragnar, hopefully getting my opponent to overcommit to attacking Ragnar, because Iridial is on the line. Whichever player ends up winning this, if their Warlord has six points of damage, uh, they're going to be able to wipe all of it away. But I end up reeling in two resources during the command phase relative to my opponent's one card, so what's working in my favor is I've got two resources, three cards, I've got a Crushing Blow to work with, an Indomitable, which I'm trying to save for that Blood Angels veteran swing of three, Three, and then my opponent happens to have four cards but no resource uh, tokens, so I am not going to be seeing any anything along the lines of Indomitable, no drop pot assaults, eager recruits, none of that garbage, I can rest assured. So for my opening action, I'm sure that my Black Main Sentinel is going to get picked off early, so I decide, okay, I'm going to have it take a swing to try to kill off my opponent's Black Main Sentinel. Once again, I'm resting assured that he doesn't have the resources to play out Indomitable, and I've got the flexibility of a crushing blow in my hand. So he discards Indomitable as shields, and because I feel like this could very well be the game deciding battle. I feel if I lose this, it's all going to be over. I do use that copy of Crushing Blow specifically because I'm killing one of his units and preventing it from having an opportunity to attack my own. His copy of Ragnar takes a swing at mine, and I take that damage. It's my thought that I want to basically absorb as many hits as I possibly can, only to use Indomitable at the last possible moment. I don't want to retreat. If I have to give up this first planet, I want to kill off as many of his units as I possibly can. So it's presently my combat turn, and I'm trying to decide, do I want to attack with my war? Lord, do I want to attack with my honored librarian? Throughout this match that I played on Skype, I must have apologized a million times for just the amount of time I was uh, taking to do uh, you know, combat math where I'm half paying attention to that, half being distracted by my opponent. And I have to wonder if my opponent's uh, 
uh, attempting to engage me in conversation during the match was in deliberate attempt to get me to make a mistake, but maybe that's just the uh, uh, psychology student and former therapist in me uh, overanalyzing the situation, but my honored librarian could have killed off his Blood Angels veterans, but I did not want to risk his having a two-shield value card, and once again, I felt like unless he had Frostfang in his hand, I'd have guaranteed been able to kill that unexhausted Black Main Sentinel, so I was just trying to deprive him of as many units as possible. His Blood Angels Veterans takes a swing at Ragnar, and I take that three points of damage without question. I've still got that uh, Indomitable, I've still got Iridial as the battle ability on the line, and now that his Blood Angels Veterans is exhausted, I'm trying to think. I do not actually let go of that shift arrow, so I don't have to do the awkward takesy backsies thing, and uh, I'm ultimately, I believe, going to decide on Ragnar attacking Ragnar. I'm not exactly sure if this was the correct decision or not, but I definitely want to get rid of that veterans. I definitely want to try to give Ragnar reason to leave the planet. I want to make my opponent afraid that I might use a drop pod assault or something like that, but it looks like I do ultimately settle on that Blood Angels veterans, which I'm happy about. That's what I would have done in hindsight, so I'm glad that in the past I did what I'd have done I don't know, an hour after I played this match, but the Blood Angels Veterans takes two points of damage, and now that makes me rest assured that uh, since I've got the first attack, I've got the initiative token, I'll be able to clear it out almost certainly. Well, in fact, certainly, uh, thanks to my honored librarian there, but would I risk attacking with the honored librarian? Would I attack with Ragnar, my Black Mane Sentinel? Our combat round comes to a close, and I've got the opportunity to retreat first. I'm trying to think, trying to do combat math in my head, but it's difficult when you've got an opponent on Skype and the pressure's on. I don't want to be rude, but at the same time, I really want to focus on my math. But I take this opportunity to remove Ragnar from the situation. I'm thinking to myself, if I can get my opponent to overextend, I've got that indomitable to rely on. For all my opponent knows, maybe I've got a drop pot assault or eager recruit, but I think that's probably pretty unlikely. I think I'd have probably used it by now had I had that in my hand. So, again, to play it safe, my honored librarian kills off that Blood Angels veterans, and now I'm trying to decide what exactly do I want to do. I decide to play out a copy of Indomitable. In retrospect, I believe what I should have done is actually just discarded that as shields. My opponent had an opportunity earlier to play a crushing blow to kill off my honored librarian, so I think in hindsight, since he didn't do it then, I should have rest assured that he did not have it in his hand. So I think that that's one single resource token that I've effectively wasted, uh, because unless my opponent does area effect or something like that, uh, that Indomitable could have been better spent to absorb the attack of, say, Blood Angels Veterans or uh, Honored Librarian, anything like that. You know, considering Ragnar plays Catachan Outposts, blah blah blah, but I take a swing with my Sentinel for two, Ragnar takes a bit of damage, I've got one resource, one card, my opponent has zero resources and three cards, and at the end of the combat round, my opponent doesn't want to give me the opportunity to attack with my Honored Librarian and risk uh, his Ragnar being bloodied, so he ends up retreating, that means I win the battle at the first planet, and I'm able to trigger Iridial's battle ability, and though I was all but certain I was going to just be outright destroyed at the first planet, planet, once again, uh, a lack of confidence in myself, lack of faith in my uh, conquest abilities just because of the low number of games I've played relative to my video count. Uh, I do manage to win that combat, and things are looking pretty decent for me at this point, but our headquarters phase comes and goes. Barless is our new planet number five. That's going to be the card discard planet. I didn't mention it before, but our current planet number three is Farin, which routes non-warlord units, and planet number four is going to be Ossus Four. So at the present moment, I don't have very many cards, but I do have quite a few more resources than I do cards. I put a Void Pirate out to planet number 5, my opponent puts a 10th Company Scout to planet number 3, so he's going for resources and I'm going for cards. He uses the remainder of his resources, to my dismay, to play out a kind of frustratingly powerful combat unit. I was hoping to once again sweep the first planet, but that Blood Angels Veterans is definitely going to be complicating things. Uh, one of my areas of weakness 
weakness is that I always try to play the shortest game possible, I always assume my opponents are far more skillful than myself, so if I can finish a game early, I give less opportunity for my opponent to really demonstrate their uh, superiority to me. They have fewer opportunities for me to make mistakes, uh, and I feel it kind of helps shore up some of my weaknesses. So I decide, okay, I'm going to go with my hyper-aggressive playstyle. I'm going to try to pressure that first planet. I don't have any shield icons in my hand, but I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to draw some of those uh, during combat or during the command phase here. So I put the siege force to planet number one. I am basically convincing myself that I need to be sending my warlord to planet number one. And I'm trying to think, do I want to go to planet number one? Do I want to go to planet number two? If I go to planet number two, then I'm going to forego my early game victory condition through blue icons. I'd have to rely on strong point or something like that. But uh, my opponent also selects planet number one. He's going to have the opportunity to trigger his reaction first. And now, you know, to my frustrated dismay, I don't have any shield cards. He targets my Imperial Fist Siege Force, and it's immediately going to be destroyed. So that kind of sucks. That's not going to do me any good, and that's uh, going to afford my opponent here the opportunity to win command. So I choose to trigger my reaction at Ragnar Blackmane just so I can put as much pressure on him as I possibly can, uh, because if I can get him to retreat, I could potentially win the battle at that planet, and uh, he ends up actually discarding a drop pot assault as shield. So I definitely like to see that effect. I end up winning command on two different planets. I get a grand total of three cards, two resources relative to my opponents two cards and two resources so my void pirates doing a little bit of work there i've currently got four resources four cards relative to my opponents two resources and four cards we're about to go into the combat round and note that my opponent has the initiative token he's got his warlord he's got his blood angels veterans and i've only got a copy of primal howl so ragnar is going to be taking a little bit of damage here i have ragnar take two points of damage straight away and his accursed copy of blood angels veterans is once again uh, unexhausted and just ready to take a swing at me. I didn't want to deal it a point of damage from Ragnar, only to have it, uh, you know, prevent one of the initial two that he deals. And similarly, I'm not really feeling up to having yet another point of damage uh, circumvented again. So Space Marines don't have any ability to heal whatsoever. Iridial is gone. So I just think to myself... Uh, am I going to be expecting anything along the lines of a drop pot assault or eager recruit? What exactly am I going to see? So, Ragnar, I do not decide to retreat, I don't think. Uh, I decide to take a swing at his warlord and put him at three remaining hit points. So, is my opponent going to shield? He's only got four cards in hand. What is he going to do? He decides to take that damage, and that means his Blood Angels Veterans is going to have an opportunity to take a swing at me, and that means Ragnar is going to be sitting at five points of damage, putting me dangerously close to being bloodied. And now I'm entirely at my opponent's mercy. The combat round is going to come to an end here, save for actions. My opponent has two resources. What does that mean? It could mean Drop Pot Assault. It could mean... Uh, two eager recruits. We see a drop pot assault hit the table to my dismay, and I just hope and pray that it whiffs. What exactly are we going to see? Maybe he'll only find a sanctioned psyker? Alas, <laughs> no. What is the worst thing he could have possibly drawn? An honored librarian. And that is just a complete nightmare. He's got his warlord sitting there. He's got his blood angels veterans sitting there. Ragnar has two hit points left. All I can do is shield two. Ragnar takes a swing of four. And my only option is to, uh, you know, bloody Ragnar. So fortunately, my opponent no longer has any additional combat actions. And, you know, if a new round of combat starts, it's going to be my opponent's opportunity to attack. He's got the initiative token. I'm not going to be able to win this battle, so I'm going to cut my losses. My opponent indicates that he's going to retreat his warlord alone. And uh, instead of falling victim to the sunk cost fallacy, I decide... Okay, I'm going to get the hell out of there, uh, so my unit's ready, and in just a moment, I'll be retreating those. 
Okay, so now we finally see that retreat. So, after the, well, at the onset of the first battle, I was convinced I was doing great. Now that our second battle has concluded, I'm convinced that I'm about to be smashed. But, what have I demonstrated that I can do passably well in past videos? I can attempt to recover from doing poorly. So, my opponent uh, triggers the battle ability there of Elowith. He's going to win that one technology icon. And now I've got to reassess my victory condition. Okay, Elowith is going to be gone. It's vanished into the mist. We see our headquarters phase come and go. Our new fifth planet is Karnath, the trigger any battle ability planet. I draw Eager Recruit and Frostfang. I've got eight resources, six cards. My opponent has four resources, six cards. I'm thinking to myself, okay, try to outplay him during command. Try to deploy pretty heavily in regard to units at planet number one and planet number two. I do have one material strong point and technology icon, one red, one blue, one green. Our first and second planets both have red icons, so I could potentially win our first planet and our second, and win through red. I could potentially win uh, through green at first planet and green at third planet. Granted, Ragnar is bloodied, but I feel like if I play things out the right way, I've got double the resources in my opponent. I ended up getting an Eager Recruit, which is a fantastic combat trick. I've got Primal Howl and Frostfang as shields. I feel like I'm not not completely hopeless yet. Uh, the Honored Librarian and Blood Angels veterans are going to be showing up exhausted to whatever planet they commit to, so I'm thinking to myself, how can I try and win this one? I'm assessing my hand, and I'm very much wanting to react to my opponent. I'm trying to think, I want to block him in as many planets as possible in a command sense, and I want to win as many planets as possible in a command sense. We'll note, in hindsight, that I'm taking long to think of these actions the first time that I am, uh, you know, trying to buy myself time commentating here. But I thought this was a fairly clever play of mine. My opponent puts out a rogue trader to planet number five. That's all well and good, but I put a black main sentinel to planet number one, and this allows me awesome flexibility. If my opponent goes to planet, uh, like, okay, I'm thinking in my mind I'm going to send Ragnar to planet number two because that could ultimately be my victory planet. That way, if he pushes planet number one, if my black main sentinel is in jeopardy of being killed, because his warlord would be present, he'd get the initiative token, I can trigger its reaction to move it to planet number two, and then it'll be ready to provide a nice bit of a wall, uh, at least during my, my next turn. And I can do the route thing if I win a battle there. I, I feel in my mind it was working out like a, a pretty clever tactic. And uh, similarly, if my opponent went to planet number, I suppose, anywhere but uh, planet number one, I could also maybe just kind of adjust to that once I had all the information. But really, all I had in my mind was, I'd like to go to planet number two, and I can do the Black Main Sentinel trick to pose some threat uh, to planet number one. So I could basically kind of force my opponent to go to... Um, planet number one there. But we see an Imperial Fist Siege Force go to planet number four. It routes my Void Pirate, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, I suppose it's fine if if my opponent wins uh, the battle at planet number, or if he wins command at planet number four, I'll still likely be able to draw a card thanks to that Void Pirate. But I'm just trying to think, is it safe if I go to planet number two? In retrospect, I'm not entirely certain why I was so sure. I, I guess I honestly had no idea where my opponent was going to, to send his units. Uh, it would definitely work out favorably if, if he did not pick out planet number one, but I was at a bit of a loss for what to expect in regard to where he might go. So, I'm trying to think. I've still got five resources and four cards. My opponent has one resource and four cards. I've got some combat tricks available to me. I'm hoping to draw into a lot more during combat, but uh, I end up picking that copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas primarily, well, for a couple different reasons. First and foremost, to match his uh, unit there in command, and then because I'm thinking of sending Ragnar to that planet's 
uh, just because if he happens to send his warlord there, I'll also have the opportunity to blast that planet with Area Effect 1, so I'll be able to deal damage to that honored librarian and the veterans, even though you normally can't do that so easily. So, I indicate planet number two, and my opponent also indicates planet number two. I suppose he was hoping I'd have gone further down the line so that he could win that early on battle and route one of my units and then set himself up very nicely to block off my inevitable victory condition here. Uh, I'm going to remember to exhaust my Black Main Sentinel and my Honored Librarian in just a moment, but we've got a few different reactions here. I'm going to go ahead and trigger a Primal Howl, even though it itself is a powerful shield card, I want to just chance drawing more, you know, combat tricks. I've I've got three resources, that's plenty to work with. I end up getting a Draw Pot Assault, Blood Angels Veterans, and another copy of Eager Recruits, so I'm very happy to see those. And considering that we've yet to win Command Struggles, I'm feeling great in regard to, I'm going to be reeling in even more cards and resources here. So, he targets my Honored Librarian. I don't want to use my Draw Pot Assault, but I want to ensure that it takes no damage so it affords him no opportunity to, you know, kill it off. Even if my Honored Librarian would have been completely healed, uh, I wouldn't have wanted him to use a crushing blow. So I use that Frost Fang to negate that damage completely, even though he's got his Honored Librarian and Blood Angels Veterans, even though that was somewhat suboptimal. So, in regard to uh, command struggles, I'm uh, basically just going to win two. My opponent and I are going to tie at planet number two, so my Void Trader isn't, uh, well, Void Pirate isn't doing me any good. I get a uh, grand total of three resources, which is good, I suppose, because I have so many tricks already. My opponent gets two cards, so I'm at six resources, four cards. He's at one resource, six cards. I ask if he has an Eager Recruit or anything like that at planet number one, which is going to be Yvarn. Note that I did not move my black main sentinel, so I'm nicely going to capture that planet that puts me at two icons of each type, and it sets me up potentially next turn to win the battle through Farron here. So, battle is about to break out at planet number two. My Ragnar is bloodied, his Ragnar is sitting at three points of damage. I'm trying to decide... I've got Ragnar, he's got five hit points. I can basically trigger this area effect volley, but I run a little bit of a risk. If he attacks me with one of his two damage units, I could block it with Drop Pot Assault, uh, he could use three crushing blows, kill my warlord, and uh, basically kill me outright, but at one point I check the remaining number of cards in his deck, and I'm taking a bit of a calculated risk in thinking that he's unlikely to have drawn all three copies of that in the six cards in his hand within the 20 less, like, I don't know, 15 or 16 cards that he's drawn thus far. So, I use my opportunity to do Tactical Squad Cardenas to do one area effect damage. Each and every one of his units present at the planet ends up taking that damage, and here I'm trying to decide, do I want Ragnar to take two points of damage and risk those three crushing blows? I decide, no, I don't. I'm gonna save my Drop Pot Assault. Now, it's gonna be my opportunity for a combat turn. I retreat with Ragnar Blackmane. I I do not want an eager recruit to drop down and potentially deal him some more damage. Although in hindsight, uh, since he didn't crushing blow, uh, I suppose he was he could have been holding on to one copy of crushing blow. I guess maybe I'm a little too afraid of that event. I've certainly mentioned it enough by name, uh, but. That's what I was afraid of. So it's going to be the end of the combat round. It's going to be my opportunity for actions. Do I have any actions, you ask? By golly, I certainly do. I put out an eager recruit first, and I'm trying to maximize the value of these units. Uh, I could drop Pot Assault, and I could maybe get something big like an Honored Librarian, but I'm trying to play my wimpy stuff first to get my opponent to use as many cards as possible. For instance, he plays an Indomitable in response to my eager recruit. He ended up blocking two points of damage, whereas it could potentially be used to block, since I run two Catachan Outposts in this deck, I don't know, eight, or if I had a Ragnar's War Camp, like 16. 
So the eager recruit takes a swing at Ragnar, he blocks it all, he has no actions, he's out of resources, I play my second copy of eager recruit, I've got the initiative token, and I once again take a swing, now his Ragnar black mane is bloodied, and as we go into combat, I'm going to have the initiative token. So he's got two wounded units at this planet, and I've just got a glut of different units here. I know that this planet is my victory condition, so I feel as though there's no need whatsoever to hold on to this unit. Uh, I suppose it's entirely possible he could have played a copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas or a Daring Assault Squad on his turn, but I uh, basically take a peek at the top six cards in my deck. My one and only option here is going to be the copy of Tactical Squad Cardenas, so I rearrange the remaining five cards. At the bottom of my deck, I put those Indomitables on top, followed by the Sanction Psyker, and then finally the, uh, those two copies of Promotion. So Tactical Squad Cardenas is in play. My opponent once again has no actions, and I use this opportunity to see just if my opponent has any shield cards whatsoever. So under normal circumstances, I'm not thrilled to see these Tactical Squad Cardenases here, but they do another point of damage onto the Blood Angels veterans, and they outright kill off my opponent's Honored Librarian. I remember at the very first match of Conquest I ever played, those Librarians felt all but indestructible, and now I'm actually feeling pretty good about them, so I've just got this enormous surplus of combat units all sitting at our soon to be planet number one, there are no more combats to be conducted, and presently I'm feeling very, very good. I've got the two tax squads, my Black Main Sentinel, I've got my Honored Librarian, both eager recruits, I've got my Void Pirate, I've got in my hand an Honored Librarian and Blood Angels Veterans, I've got an Iron Guard Recruit, and at this point, my uh, opponent over Skype ends up calling out GG, so a good game. He realizes that this planet, as my victory condition, is going to be just entirely futile should he attempt to push and play and try to win this game. He does a little bit of a last-minute Hail Mary there in that Ragnar's war camp before he ultimately calls out GG, but a spectacularly well-played on behalf of Ready Spades. His warlord was bloody. He had the initiative token, but either I'd have handily won the first planet, or he'd have maybe sent his units to the first planet, uh, used a combat action to retreat, I'd have been able to kill off his Blood Angels veterans, or in any case, I just had such a sheer weighty bulk of units that I'd have been able to beat him down, and slowly but surely won the battle, no matter what I'd have drawn during the combat phase. I could have put out that Iron Guard recruits to try to serve to deprive my opponent of command, I could have tried to draw some additional cards, get some additional uh, just combat tricks to seal the deal there, but once again, I'll just say very well played and a spectacular match today from Ready Spades. Thank you so much to him for allowing me to record this spectacular game, and thank you for watching. This concludes the eighth week of Sam Mann's Warhammer 40k Conquest Octagon Wa Online Competitive League, and at this point, I've gone six Six and two, six wins, two losses. I've made the top eight in the tournament, and next week the top four is going to be on the line. So thank you very much for taking this journey with me. I certainly hope you enjoyed this special video today. But with that said, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. Or if you are already subscribed, as ever, you're always encouraged to share this content. As the more viewers there are that stumble upon these videos, the more people may investigate Conquest, they may try out the game, like what they experience, join our community, and all together, we send the message to Fantasy Flight Games to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, either to just touch base through Twitter or through Facebook, you're welcome to do so, and I'm always on the lookout for games to spectate, record, and commentate and especially if you have access to live-action, isometric, HD, camera-recorded gameplay, I'd be absolutely honored and flattered to commentate games of that kind. If at any point you'd like to give back to the Hive Tyrant and donate a dollar or two on a strictly monthly basis to help me recover some of my file hosting and operating expenses, I'd be honored were you to visit my Patreon. But, as ever, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.